Hi, I'm Emily from Shenandoah Wellness, and today I'm going to walk you through how to make a batch of fermented sauerkraut. One really fascinating thing about cultured vegetables is that when you allow them to ferment fully, they reach uh, the same acidity of your stomach. And so what this means is all the healthy microbes that you're growing when you eat the sauerkraut not only um, makes it to your stomach, but they can actually remain alive through your stomach and make it into your large intestine where you really want um, the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria to make it alive. So that's how eating a naturally fermented product um, is so much better for you than taking a probiotic capsule or powder. So first we just have our ingredients. Uh, this is the basic sauerkraut that I make all the time. And um, I have, uh, of course, cabbage. You could do red or green. I like red just because of the vibrant color. Uh, carrots, got some garlic. I put kelp powder in just to get a little bit of the sea vegetable goodness in there. Got some dill salt, and lemon juice. Uh, the very first step is to peel the garlic and I do all of the sauerkraut. I grind all the ingredients in the food processor instead of hand slicing. And I find that it just ferments really well and then makes a really great topping for salads, which is where we predominantly use our sauerkraut. So we have the peeled garlic, which you could use anywhere from four to six garlic cloves. I have six in here and I'm just going to pulse them in the food processor. The next step is we're going to take the cabbage and you peel off some of the outside leaves and you're going to want to save. I usually peel off three leaves and that way I usually use two of them. Um, for putting in the jar for weighting down the sauerkraut. Um, and then the very outside leaf, I think it's usually good just to give that to the chickens anyhow. So we're gonna peel that. And then to cut, I'm just gonna get a bigger knife. And you wanna start just by cutting the cabbage in half. Then you're going to want to remove the core. Just cut. And we're going to uh, pulse this up in the food processor, but I cut it into quarters and then into slices like this. We have the minced garlic in the food processor and I'm just gonna add some of the cabbage and as you're putting it in, you've sliced it, but I usually kind of break up some of the bigger chunks anyhow. So it's not a big deal. When you grind it, if there are any chunks that don't get ground up, I just save them for the next batch. So I always try to put in as much as possible, usually push the limits a little. So I have a few chunks that I'm just gonna pull out to save for the next batch, but you can see that most of that is just minced and it doesn't have to be perfect. And so that batch, I'm just gonna throw right here into my bowl for mixing. And we're gonna repeat that same process, just blending the cabbage until all the cabbage is used up. So we have uh, ground all of our cabbage in the food processor and placed it in our large mixing bowl. And the next step is just to start cutting up the carrots. Um, these are some homegrown carrots, but just whenever I don't have homegrown, I use just grocery store carrots. 
and um, you can also use beets in this recipe if you like. Uh, these are washed but not peeled. If I was getting grocery store carrots, I would, even organic, I would probably peel them. And you're gonna cut up all your carrots and the same thing with the cabbage. You're gonna put them in batches in the food processor and grind them up until they're nicely grated and um, add them to the cabbage mix. All of our vegetables have all been um, grated in the food processor, so we're just gonna add the last ingredients and stir it. I have salt, um, I prefer Celtic salt, and you're gonna put two tablespoons. And kelp, uh, I usually add about three tablespoons. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I like to add a tablespoon of dried dill. And the last ingredient is I use uh, lemon juice. I buy just bottled uh, pure lemon juice. And I don't really know how much I add, but just like that much. And just to add a little more moisture, and you mix it. I like spinning the bowl as I mix it. After it's all mixed, you want to just walk away and let it sit for 10 minutes. And that's going to give it time for the salt to start acting with the cabbage so that the cabbage releases some of its water. So, so we've let the sauerkraut sit for about 10 minutes and you're just gonna give it one more stir just to mix everything. And you can't know this, but I'm smelling a really strong smell of garlic and dill right now. And the next step is to fill your jars. I like these Fido jars, it's F-I-D-O, and this is a one and a half liter, but they come with a gasket, and uh, the gasket um, keeps mold from forming, so it keeps enough air out, but yet it also uh, allows the fermentation gases to release so that you don't have a broken jar. When I first started fermenting, I used the open top crocs with, you know, you would submerge the vegetables and with a weight of some sort, and then you'd cover the crock with a cloth. And I always had mold forming, and they tell you just to scrape the mold off and it just never, scraped off nicely for me. And sometimes I would have my ferment turn out really well and sometimes it would just have a funny taste. But ever since I've used these jars, it always turns out wonderfully. So after you've filled it up like that, you're gonna press it down and I just use my hand. You could probably have a tamper of some sort, but it, presses down quite a bit and you're gonna see the liquid start coming to the top, which is what you want, because you want your vegetables to always be under submerged under the liquids during the fermentation. So I have some more space. You wanna leave a little extra space at the top because you have, we're gonna put a glass weight on top and then also just to have, as it ferments, more and more liquid comes up and you want it to have enough space so it doesn't overflow. 
my ferments tend to overflow, so I have a spot in my pantry where I keep them, and I place all my jars in a uh, glass baking dish just to catch all of that. Um, so this one is, I would call this full, and you take one of your cabbage leaves that we saved, and I fold it up to approximately the size and kind of stretch it out. And then I have a glass fermentation weight, and I buy the ones that are the large size because they're a little bit larger for wide mouth jars. And I just press down, and you're gonna see the liquid come up and the weight itself is submerged. And you're just gonna wipe the lid off. And I got a little bit on the gasket, gonna wipe that off. And you seal it. And we have a little bit of the sauerkraut left. So I'm gonna show you a second way you can do it, which I wish I'd known about years ago. You don't even need a fancy jar and you don't need an open crock. You can use just a canning jar and you fill it up and then use up what we have. As it gets full, we're just going to press it down and then it'll hold some more. Almost. We will just same thing. You're going to press it down until you start seeing the liquid coming up. And then you're going to put the cabbage leaf in. And the whole point of the cabbage leaf, especially because the ferment that I do is grated vegetables, it's just going to keep everything uh, submerged in your jar. Because this jar is smaller, this really thick, hard portion of the cabbage leaf rib I just tore off. You're going to press that down and then press a weight in and press it down till you see the liquid come up. Now when you're using a canning jar, you're going to put the lid on and I'm not going to overly tighten it but every two or three days, you're gonna to wanna to loosen it just to let any of the extra gases escape. And you'll put your sauerkraut in a cool, dark room, and you wanna let it ferment for at least 10 days, but I let mine go for weeks, and when I'm ready to use it, you just take the weight out, the cabbage leaf out, and store it in the fridge. Thanks a lot.